Hello, hello, and welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm your host, Aurora, and I'm so happy to have you here today. If you want to rest and relax, reflect, unwind from a busy day, then this is the place to be. Today is episode number 35. I want to talk about boundaries and resentment. I feel that boundaries and resentment go hand in hand. People who have clear boundaries, who know how to communicate their boundaries and don't feel bad about their boundaries, don't carry around as much resentment, if at all, than people who don't have boundaries. So if you look at your life, if you look at your relationships, how do you react to boundaries of others? Can you recall a situation where a friend told you um, she has to go home now because she has errands to run or she has to keep it short on the phone today? Um, think about a situation maybe in recent days where a friend, partner, family member, set a boundary and do you remember how you reacted how did you feel in that moment was that very natural to you because you know that person already or was it really natural and good because you have the same boundaries um, or were there feeling of rejection abandonment coming up so take a moment to think about it and be real honest with you, <laughs> with yourself. And how do others react to your boundaries? Do they respect them without questioning, without asking um, for you to give them a reason? Or... Do they guilt trip you and shame you and call you selfish because you set a boundary? A lot of people have problems with other people's boundaries and even come up with very manipulative, passive aggression um, that is very, very uncomfortable and makes you feel bad about you setting a boundary then. So... Take a moment now and think about a situation where you were setting a boundary and how the other person reacted. Now, why is it so important to have boundaries and why is it so hard for so many people to set boundaries? I think it all starts when we're very young and um, I mentioned that in my first or second episode already, our parents were not born with a manual where it says what we exactly need in which moment and where our boundaries are and um, where we have room to grow. Like we are thrown into this world and our parents are trying to do their best and some parents are really overwhelmed with parenting and wherever you show character, wherever you show um, your limits or your boundaries and it doesn't go with the intentions of the parent, you will be told that it is not okay, it's inconvenient and you are not allowed to set that boundary. And then growing up, we learn that setting boundaries is a bad thing and that it creates conflict with people that we need and love. And it's really very detrimental to a relationship, a romantic relationship in adulthood then, if you don't know how to clearly communicate your boundaries. It's a big part of getting to know another person. A person who trusts you enough to tell you that he or she doesn't like something wants to be close to you, even though it feels like that person is pushing you away in the moment. Really, that person is showing you her limits and wants to be in contact with you just under 
certain circumstances and conditions, which is totally valid. So you actually build trust and setting boundaries because that person then know they can count on you when you're there. And when you're not there, they're not rejecting or trying to mind fuck you or manipulate you or make you feel bad. Then they're just busy with something else. So it is definitely a strong trust building tool that you need in all relationships. So let's talk about some examples now. You are on a phone with a friend and the person tells you, oh, I got a rush, I have to hang up now, I have no time for a lengthy talk today. Or a friend you meet up with and um, actually you had the intention to spend three hours with her, but after one and a half hours she says, oh, well, I still have to go for grocery shopping and do my laundry. Or when you ask for help or support and the person is not exactly there for you as you need it. A person who has strong boundaries um, is very easy to identify because those people are 100% present with you when they tell you that they want to help you. A person who has no boundaries at all says yes to pretty much everything and wants to be the people pleaser and the best friend ever and can't be replaced by anything. But sometimes they do things and you can really feel that they don't really do it, but they do it anyways. And those are the times when they were too weak to say no to you and were maybe scared that they would upset you or make you feel as if they rejected you or so so that's a very easy clue that you can get when a person is 100% there for you at their disposal so to say and when a person is half acidly helping you out and um, yeah you can literally feel that they say yes but don't really mean it and those are boundary problems that they have and not you so it's very easy to see then that everybody involved is suffering the person who says yes but actually means no and the person who's accepting the services and the support and feels like oh well that person is not really there with me and what's going on here and sometimes we tend to force things because we are in need of help, we are um, in need of support or whatever, and we kind of want people to be there in the moment. But really, if they do it then out of fear of not wanting to hurt you, then you do yourself a huge disservice you have to know that a lot of people want to have a harmonious relationship with you but if you don't respect their boundaries in that moment then you will either face a huge rejection and a huge uh, monologue <laughs> or they will face you with resentment and resentment is just a natural um, outcome because people then feel violated and feel they've been tricked into a situation that they want to be in. And the f uh, I don't want to swear here, but the very weird thing about that is that they are resentful towards you now. Um, even though it was their problem to set boundaries, they are resentful with you because they feel violated by you because you were maybe persistent or more assertive or clever with your words and they didn't have the words at the time to say no and so now you are sitting in that mess. So all this to say is that we have to encourage people to have boundaries. We have to encourage our partners, especially in romantic relationships, to 
be independent and do their own thing and tell us what they want and what they don't want. Because if we don't respect that and if they don't respect this in our, um, like when it comes to us, then no healthy relationship can be built on that. So trust is probably one of the biggest things when you enter a relationship, a romantic relationship. But then I find being able to set boundaries and to tell the people honestly what we don't like and what we don't want to see, how we don't want to be treated is a huge thing in forming a respectful relationship. So this was my episode for you today. Um, resentment and boundaries, very critical um, to think about when you think about your friendships and also your family members. I often hear over Christmas um, there's been lots of family drama in my with my friends or um, acquaintances and with family members it is the hugest the biggest problem because when you grow up and they are used to just bullying you around and um, not really respecting your needs because you always go with the flow and then all of a sudden you turn around and tell them that this is not going on like this that you have your boundaries now then you will usually meet huge resistance and resentment and manipulation but if you do it out of a pure heart from a very authentic place then I beg you to stick to your guns and to stay calm and to just hold that boundary up like a white flag. <laughs> um, it is critical because people will behave differently around you and probably um, treat you better and respect you more if you learn how to set your boundaries in a kind and very clear way. All right. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Um, this was the Borealis Experience. I'm your host, Aurora. Thank you for being a part of this. You have been amazing support and I'm motivated every day to produce something for you. Until next time, bye-bye, Aurora. <laughs>